But I, I wanted to ask you, Sarah, about um, about ICRC's approach to responding to, to sexual violence in particular, because I think that's the, the focus that you have. And uh, you've written an article for The Exchange, which talks a bit about this. And I wonder if you could share some of the uh, work that you're doing. And I, I was particularly interested in the, um, the work with the listening houses in the DRC, yeah. but, but please. Yeah, no, and um, thank you very much. I'd just like to echo everybody else now, and thanks for holding this event. I think it's really important, and there's a lot of wise comments that have been made by my co-panelists that I hope to add to. But, um, yeah, the ICRC has been focusing on sexual violence for a long time now um, and is enhancing that in the next four years um, through a range of, of different um, ways in which we can we can make even stronger our response. And there's, there's three particular ways which I just wanted to cover now, which are the ways that we try to prevent the occurrence of sexual violence in the first place, then to protect those who are specifically at risk, and then finally to respond um, to, to victims of sexual violence. And um, the, the, the first is possibly the most dry, which is building systemic, helping states to build systemic legal protection for people at risk and explaining to states and uh, local authorities, national authorities, that they have an obligation um, to prevent sexual violence from occurring and that when it does occur, they um, must apply sanctions for perpetrators and provide, um, and, and also to then, um, uh, to then also make sure that there's adequate codes of conduct in place to, um, to for people in positions of power and members of armed forces so that they really understand the, the the gravity of the situation and that this is not acceptable. So that's one of the, the first things that, that we do. And then in terms of um, protecting those who are at risk, just to, to look at the best way of, I think, explaining this will be to look at one specific scenario, which is detention. Um, the ICRC uh, <laughs> visits uh, detainees in places of detention around the world. And um, and really people, men and women, and, and as already mentioned, men and boys are often, and unfortunately, also the... Uh, the victims of sexual violence and sexual abuse. And, and people in detention are very vulnerable for a number of different reasons. And there are certain risk factors which can mean that they are more exposed to the risk of um, sexual violence than others. So we talk to um, the prison authorities and local and national authorities about when certain conditions may be in place which would enhance the risk. So lack of appropriate hygiene facilities, lack of privacy, overcrowding, um, ensuring that groups of prisoners are, are split and categorised according to, for example, women being housed with women and children and minors being housed separately from men. Um, and to then make sure that when there are female detainees that they, they uh, there are female guards that are that are watching them, that are that are with them. So we just there's those various different things that uh, for this vulnerable population, if these these aspects are tackled, the likelihood of sexual violence occurring is so much so much less. And in such a situation, for sexual violence can be perpetrated by in co inmates um, from uh, prison guards or from um, external people coming in. So that's a, it's one other way. And then, as you you mentioned. Um, uh, Wendy, the uh, work that we've we have done in DRC, and and um, I think to also return to the point you just made about community groups, which are absolutely vital. I mean, I think there, you you must. I, I completely agree with. I think it was Alina who said that you you cannot wait for for substantive understanding of exactly what is happening in a specific community with regards to sexual violence. You have to you have to plan to act um, regardless of having that data, but. It's also you also need to understand the context and you need to understand um, you need to have people that you can work with as an international organization, a, a Western European international organization going into a context you are not necessarily going to be approachable to people who have suffered terrible abuse. And so you must be aware of that. And so we work with these listening houses, 40 listening houses in, in DRC called Maison de Coot. Um, and these are places, interestingly, these are places where people who've experienced all different types of violence can come and receive treatment so that by by going um, to one of these places you're not automatically stigmatized or understood to be going for a reason in connection with sexual violence or sexual abuse so i think that's something that's um that's very key actually and and i i mean the the actual process when people come to the to the houses is very much you 
you're you're seen privately, um, separately on your own with the with a counsellor who's been trained um, to notice the the signs of, of sexual abuse and um, and psychosocial uh, train has received psychosocial training to be able to talk to you. And then that's the first point at which you would say what has happened to you, rather than you know signing in a GP surgery like we might do in London and and. And it, it being something that comes up straight away. So I think that's that's pretty key, that, that sort of individual treatment. And the fact that if people have nowhere else to go, if they're very vulnerable, then they can stay at the centres. And they can come back as many times as they want. And um, and these these um, Maison de Coute also do a lot of awareness raising. As already was just saying, it's completely vital, not just... Um, to people who are perhaps at risk so that they understand both the importance of receiving urgent medical treatment within 72 hours to treat serious injury, to reduce the risk of STDs, infections, HIV, pregnancy, um, but then also to, to, to broadcast the existence of the, these, these, these places and also um, explain that victims of sexual violence should not be stigmatized. It's, this is one of the strangest crimes in the world in that the victims are the ones in many societies and communities which are stigmatized rather than the perpetrators, and that's it's very odd. So, but, but this, but through um, both workshops and radio broadcasts, then the, these, these community listening houses can, can push that message out to a wide range of people, both non-state armed actors, but then also um, government, uh, government officials, uh, communities, men, women, children. So um, I think that's really key. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think it, it yeah, the ICSC will just co will continue to, to respond, respond to this problem. And I think, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the one thing I would just say is that we've been working with these Maison de Coute and in DRC and since 2006. We did a, uh, to, to talk briefly to your point on, um, on output monitoring rather than analysis pre-engagement um, on this issue. Um, we had uh, a number of um, of one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions. On an anal analysis was done last year, actually, to look at the impact that we'd had in DRC, and and it was clear that there there you know a lot has been achieved. But the ICRC is not the only organisation by far working in in DRC on sexual violence, and uh, it, it still occurs. So I think we always have to ask our ask ourselves the question about why that is and what what message the impunity in other um, political and legal um, consequences of, of the lack of justice for survivors of sexual violence means. And I think that's that's really a, something that we shouldn't forget. Just Thanks, Sarah. Um, I, I also noticed that, like Geneva Cole, you conduct workshops with armed non-state actors too, as well as governmental authorities and UN peacekeepers and others. And so what, what do you focus on in these workshops? And do you collaborate with or build on the work of Geneva Cole or the, the other way around? Um, it would be interesting to, to understand that better. Yeah, sure. Well, um, we're very pleased to have a good relationship um, with Geneva <laughs> Cole and, um, and certainly work with... Um, That's why I put you next to each yeah, other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> holding hands under the table. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but no, I mean, both at a headquarters level and, and in terms of policy and the work that we do, Centrally, but then also in the field, I think our, our teams have a lot of contact. We don't have any joint projects with Geneva Call, um, but we clearly share an interest to reach um, armed state non actors, uh, <laughs> armed non state actors. Um, and so, so yeah, I mean, I think that's that's something that's very important. We, um, I mean, uh, we have many reasons for for speaking to armed state non. Um, <laughs> Armed opposition. Um, I'm yeah. going <laughs> <laughs> to say, Elsa, so yeah, I'm exactly. Them, Weapons yeah. bearers, um, and, and I, mean, I think that our, it's important not to separate the discussion that we have with um, these groups um, uh, on the subjects of sexual violence and on other subjects. So, I mean, in any place that the ICRC works, we speak to all parties to a conflict, and we are we do work in situations of armed conflict and armed violence rather than um, in in other areas where where perhaps the violence is of a different nature or if it's a more of a development setting. Um, and one of, the, one of the primary reasons for our, our contact with these, uh, with these groups is to explain who we are, what on earth we're doing, and to try to both access perhaps populations that might be um, living within their, their territory or the, uh, an area of land that they're in control of, um, but, and then also to, um, to, to make, make sure that they understand our, our purposes and the way that we act in a neutral and partial manner. Um, through this dialogue, though, then it's of course essential that we can pass messages about um, about the obligations if it's an armed conflict that these actors have, even though they're not states which have signed the Geneva Conventions and their additional protocols. International humanitarian law applies to all parties to a conflict, and that includes those 
um, the armed opposition. So, uh, so I mean, I think that's that's one of the first things. And and clearly, sexual violence is is illegal, and uh, all actors have an obligation to prevent its occurrence. And this is this is this is the way that we would we would go about introducing this subject. So, I mean, just to because it's not been mentioned yet in legal mm. organisation, just want to quickly emphasise that. Sexual violence is a crime against humanity when committed as part of as a part of a widespread resist systematic attack. It can be defined as torture if intentionally inflicted by a state official to obtain information from a victim. It can be dis defined as genocide when imposed to change the genetic makeup of a population. And at all times, a vi it's a violation of international human rights law and some, if not most, national, religious and traditional laws as well. So it just it really cuts across everything. I just wanted to, to say that as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, in the way that we would, um, so, as, so as part of that dialogue about respect for the law, sexual violence would, would of course be one of those points, as would other, other subjects which, whether gender-based violence or not, such as the recruitment of child soldiers, um, much as um, Arunu was just saying that Geneva Call also do, we, the, if we think there is a risk of this, we will explain that this is, this is not possible and this is not something that is acceptable. So... <laughs> So there, there is a degree of messages, and they come across like this, primarily through a dialogue, and and there may be instances of developing a, a f workshop format, but that's not normally the way that we work. More of it's a continuous dialogue with these groups wherever we work. Mm. Thank you for that. I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that, Orly. Can, can I just, yeah, just a, maybe a few words on the, on the complementarity of the work we do with the uh, with the ICRC. Um, I think, I mean, we of course make sure that we exchange and communicate at all levels with ICRC at headquarter level, field level. Our our teams on the ground uh, do visit very regularly uh, the, the 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 delegations in the in, in the field. I would just highlight that maybe the difference in the in the approach is that. Where, where ICRC, and correct me if I'm wrong, where ICRC is presenting and disseminating IHL, International Humanitarian Law, as an indivisible package with emphasis on certain thematics where it's, it's relevant. Um, I think, but but the the, the, the dissemination is um, is in I would say in one in one go, and Geneva calls try to have a more sustained dialogue over time and then deepen certain thematics that are that are important. We also have, as, as, as Geneva calls, some uh, advantages on, on being a, f a fairly small organization with, with limited constraint, and notably where maybe some in some situation ICRC would have some diplomatic or political constraint. We're moving uh, more smoothly with a in, in, in context where when you have armed groups where the, the, the political situation might be a little uh, complicated to, to, to handle, we have... So in, cer in certain contexts, not so not all, of course, uh, so a bit more flexibility to uh, to um, to engage armed groups. Right. No, thanks for that. Yes, yeah, yeah, sure, sir. I certainly think there's, I'm sure, a, lot, a definite advantage to being a smaller rather than larger or organization. Sometimes, one thing I would say is that we do try to sustain the dialogue, and and certainly I, I appreciate that the the more targeted approach of Geneva Call would definitely allow you to perhaps go slightly I work in a different way on some some subjects but that certainly we we would try wherever we work to talk to every side and to sustain the dialogue although granted perhaps in a different way thanks sarah no that, that's that's interesting to to hear about the complementarities and the and the distinctions